This is the ninth video in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we will be looking at the homologous series. This is the first part of the organic chemistry section of C3. In this video we will look at what we mean by a homologous series in chemistry. We will look at the names, formula and structures of alkanes and alkenes for up to four carbon atoms and we will look at the names, formula and structures of alcohols and carboxylic acids for up to three carbon atoms per molecule. It is very important to be able to count in chemistry. For your GCSE you need to be able to use the first four. So these are meth meaning one carbon or meth eth or eth for two carbons, prop for three, and but for four. We've also got pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec, just for reference points. So this would be five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten carbons. So what do we mean by a homologous series? Well, we are talking about a group of chemicals with similar characteristics. These will be similar physical and chemical characteristics. You have come across two groups already when you looked at Edexcel C1. These being alkanes. Here we have propane, a three carbon alkane and the alkenes, those with the double bond. For example, here we've got propene, which is a three carbon alkene. As you should remember, alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. But as a reminder, what does this mean? Well, a hydrocarbon is any molecule that is made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms. The idea of saturation comes from the fact that all of the carbons are singly bonded to either a carbon or a hydrogen. So we only have single bonds on here where we've got ethane and then here for butane. Again, only single bonds. They are saturated as no more bonds can be formed. Because of this, alkanes are fairly unreactive. However, they do burn well, for example, methane. The general formula for an alkane is CnH2n plus 2. This means that as long as we know the number of carbons, we can work out the number of hydrogens. As we just mentioned, we have the general formula for alkanes, which is CnH2n plus 2. Two. This means that as long as we know the number of carbons, we can work out the number of hydrogens. Here we have the structural formulas for the first four alkanes. We have methane, which is one carbon, ethane two, propane three, and finally butane four. So using our general formula, for example for methane, we have CN, so C is one, and then H2N plus 2. So we're going to do 2 times 1 plus 2, giving us 4. C1, H4. I now want you to pause the video and work out the number of hydrogens for octane. Octane is an alkane that contains 8 carbons. Using our general formula, CN, H2N plus 2, I told you that there were 8 carbons, so we have C8, then we're going to do 2 times 8, which is 16, plus 2, which is 18. So our formula for octane would be C8H18. As you should remember from Edexcel C1, you will have also looked at alkenes. Alkenes are different to alkanes in that they contain a double covalent bond. This is a bond that has two shared electrons. So here we have our alkanes, which we just looked at. We have ethane and we have butane. If we compare these to the alkenes, so we have ethene, we can see the double bond here, and finally butene with its double bond here. When you are drawing an alkene, it does not matter which carbons have the double bond. You do need to make sure that each carbon has four bonds. Remembering it's in group four, it needs four electrons in its outer shell. 
it's important to remember that you cannot have methane. This is because you would not be able to form this double bond between two carbons, as the molecule would only have one carbon in it. Because of the double bond, it means that alkenes are much, much more reactive than alkanes as they are able to give an electron away in order to form a single bond and to bind to something themselves. We will now look at the general formula for alkenes. So alkenes also form a homologous series. There are different homologous series to the alkanes. In this case, we have the following. So we have ethene. We can see it's double bond here. One, two, three, four bonds on each carbon. We have butene, double bond here, and propene, double bond here. This gives us a general formula of CnH2n. So we do not do the plus 2 that we do for the alkanes. I want you to pause the video and work out the number of hydrogens for the alkene hexene. This is an alkene with 6 carbons. Using our general formula, we have C6, 6 as it is hex. So we are going to do 2 times n to work out our number of hydrogens. 2 times 6 is 12, so our formula for hexene would be C6H12. In order to define what a homologous series is, we can say that chemicals in a homologous series will have the same general formula. So we can link in this idea of a general formula. They show a gradual variation in one property. For example, they increase boiling points as they get larger, and they have similar chemical properties. So this will be the reactions they take part in, as well as how reactive they are in general. Unfortunately, unlike C1, you do need to know about some more homologous series. Alkanes and alkenes are two of the most common homologous series. However, we need to know about three more. The first of these is the alcohols, for example, ethanol. The second is the carboxylic acids, for example, ethanoic acid. And finally, esters, for example, ethyl ethanoate. You'll notice that all three of these examples start with eth, meaning that they have two carbons present. Each of these homologous series have their own traits. They also have their own functional group on the end. This is the part that makes them different to alkanes and alkenes. For alcohols, they have an OH group attached to the end, which is the hydroxide ion. For carboxylic acids, this is a C-double-O-H group. The carbon included in the group does count in the number of carbons that you count. And finally, for esters, this is a C double O group, but it is found in the middle of the molecule, separating the ethyl part and the ethanoate part. We will look at all of these three groups in more detail in C3.10 and C3.11, which will focus on alcohols and carboxylic acids in 3.10, and then in 3.11 we will look at esters in more detail. However, we will have a very quick overview now. So alcohols are a homologous series, just like alkanes and alkenes, and as we previously mentioned, they have the functional group OH. Two of the more common examples, we have methanol, we can see we've got one carbon here, and then ethanol, which has two carbons here. Drinking alcohol contains ethanol. So methanol is an important raw material used in the manufacture of fuels, adhesives, and solvents, as opposed to ethanol which we use in order to create alcoholic drinks, but it can also be oxidised in order to form ethanoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. The general formula for alcohols is CnH2n plus 1OH. I want you to work out the formula overall for propanol. Propanol would be an alcohol with three carbons. So for propanol, which has three carbons, we would have C3, H2N plus 1, so we're going to do 2 times 3 plus 1, so H7, 
OH. So C3H7OH would be our formula for propanol. Carboxylic acids, on the other hand, have that COOH group, which is attached as so. So we've got our carbon, which is the first member of the group. We have a double bond to the first oxygen, a single bond to the second oxygen, and then the H as well. So COOH. And we have methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, which is vinegar, and propanoic acid. So just for a quick overview on carboxylic acids, they dissolve in water to form weak acidic solutions and then they act very much like traditional acids. So they will react with carbonates to form carbon dioxide, for example calcium carbonate. They react with metals and they will react with bases. When they react with a base they will carry out a neutralisation reaction, which we looked at previously in the titrations tutorial. And it is this neutralisation reaction that allows us to form esters. As we looked at previously, an ester has a functional group of COO, and the functional group is found in the middle of the molecule. Ethyl ethanoate is the major example, and is formed when ethanoic acid reacts with ethanol. So we have our acid, and we have the OH group from the ethanol. We also form water, showing that this is a neutralisation reaction. The reaction is carried out in the presence of a catalyst. We usually use concentrated sulfuric acid. Remember, a catalyst is going to speed up the reaction, but is not going to take part in it itself. And esters can be used for many different purposes. They have very distinctive smells and tastes, and can be used for perfumes and food products. We will look at esters in far more detail in C3.11, when we look at esters, fats and soaps. The structural diagram for this reaction can be seen below. So we have ethanoic acid, so we have CCOOH, and our ethanol, CCOH, goes to ethyl ethanoate, so we've got our ethyl bit, the first two carbons, then we have our COO. It's important to note that the second carbon is part of our counting, in order to name esters, the bit of their name that ends in il, the YL bit, comes from the name of the alcohol, so in this case ethyl, and then the ethanoate part comes from the ethanoic part. So if we had ethanol and propanoic acid, we would have ethyl propanoate. We will look at esters in far more detail in C3.11 when we look at esters, fats and soaps. So as a recap to homologous series and an introduction to organic chemistry, we have five different homologous series that we need to know. The first of these are the alkanes. Alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons that contain only single bonds. Alkenes, on the other hand, are unsaturated hydrocarbons that contain a double bond between two of the carbons. The easiest way to remember which is which is that the double bond sign looks like an equal sign. Equals begins with E, which is found in the middle of the alkenes and not the alkanes. You also need to know the general formulas for these. So for alkanes, that is CnH2n plus 2. Whereas for alkenes, this is CnH2n. The next homologous series that you need to know are the alcohols. Alcohols have the functional group OH, the hydroxide ion. And have the general formula CnH2n plus 1 OH. Our next homologous series was the carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acids have the functional group of COOH. The general formula for them is CnH2n plus 1 COOH. However, it's important to note that methanoic acid only has one carbon, so its formula would be HCOOH. The final homologous series that we need to look at are esters. Esters have the functional group of COO, which is found in the middle of the molecule, and they are formed when an alcohol reacts with a carboxylic acid. 
you do not need to learn the general formula for esters for GCSE. This concludes today's tutorial video, which has been C3.9, where we have looked at an introduction to organic chemistry, we have looked at the homologous series that we need to know for GCSE, as well as having looked over their functional groups. In the next video, C3.10, we will be looking at alcohols and carboxylic acids in more detail, including the production of them. And then finally in C3.11, which will be the final video in this tutorial series, we will look over esters as well as fats and soaps.